Greetings to you young people from the CASA community. My name is Father Daniel. I'm the newly appointed rector here, and I thought one thing we could do today before joining you on a reflection on the gospel of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time is just to say hi, and I know perhaps we haven't met in person, but I'm looking forward to that. So I just want to say hi, greet you, introduce myself, and just point out that, did you know this beautiful worship space called La Casa, Our Lady of the Angels at the Casa is one of the most beautiful worship spaces here in Phoenix, at least I think so. And so you got the beautiful cross in the background that Father Vincent made, these beautiful windows, and let me show you my favorite window here. I'm just gonna turn around and take a look at that beautiful window. I love that because I can see all of creation in there and it's very Franciscan. So I'm very happy to be here. I'm just gonna walk to another space here and take a seat before I read to you the gospel. And then I just have a short reflection to share with you about it. It's a real important gospel and it pairs really well together with the gospel from last week. So I'm hoping you'll remember that gospel. And if not, I'm gonna help you. Thank you, Father Daniel. We're so glad you are here. Let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to show us the way to live. Give us the strength and the courage to do the right things when we struggle. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah spoke to the Lord and said, You tricked me, Lord, and I was very fooled. With your mighty power, you defeated me. No one ever stops sneering or telling jokes about me. All I can say to anybody is death and destruction. Your message has brought me insults and abuse. Sometimes I say to myself, I won't think about you or mention your name. But your message is like a fire burning inside me. I can't keep quiet. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, I must go to Jerusalem. There, the nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make me suffer terribly. I will be killed, but three days later, I will rise to life. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. He said, Lord, surely God won't let this happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Satan, 
get away from me. You're in my way because you think like everyone else and not like God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross and follow me. If you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my friends, again, we're comparing this to last week, where, if you remember, Jesus got the answer really well. He got the A-plus correct answer. Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And only Peter spoke up and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus greatly rewarded him and called him for giving him that right answer. He said, Peter, you're a rock. That kind of a faith response is a rock that I can build a whole church on. Okay, so doesn't it feel good to get it right, especially if Jesus is asking the question? Have you ever got the right answer in front of the whole class? And the teacher said, well done. Didn't that feel great? Now imagine if Jesus is asking the question and you get it right and the whole world is watching all the disciples. Doesn't that feel good? Well, here just a few lines later in the scripture, in the gospel, Peter says to Jesus, no, I don't like that idea of you suffering and dying. That's not a good idea. And now instead of calling Peter the rock, Jesus says, you Satan, which is just another way of saying, you are opposed to me. And what was the great reason for his opposition? He said, you're not thinking like God does. You're thinking like everybody else does. So children, it's so important to think as God thinks, okay? And that may seem impossible to us. How can we mere human beings possibly think like God thinks? Well, we can follow Jesus, okay? Maybe not on Facebook like we follow other people. We can follow Jesus in the scriptures. Look and see what are his patterns, his ways of thinking. You know, he's talking about God as Father, but certainly Jesus is the living face of God on earth. That's why it's so good to study what he spoke about, who he spent time with, what he did, how he reached out to so many, especially the people on the margins. When we study and see what Jesus does, we're beginning to get an idea of what God is like and what God does and start to invite ourselves to think like God does. And so, following him, we're going to get some things really right and we're going to get some things wrong. But Peter didn't feel the punishment of Jesus. Jesus is very forgiving. So do you think uh, Peter felt that forgiveness of Jesus for getting the wrong answer? Certainly. Because do you think Peter was wanting to be like a Satan? No, he was just thinking like everybody else does. That's why Jesus is so strong on this point to start to begin to think like God does, which is not the way people do. And so when he says, take up your cross, he means what are the hardships we're gonna face to follow Jesus? And we're gonna face some hardships. It's worthwhile, but there's still gonna be hardships. It's worthwhile to follow Jesus. So children, I ask you, what might be those hardships? Maybe we won't be so popular with others because we're not gonna do what everybody else does. We're not gonna think like everybody else does. But that is a cross worth carrying because as we begin to think and act like Jesus, we're going in the right direction because that's what life on earth is about. It's to become more and more like Christ, Christ for others. So I bless you on that project of your way of doing it. Every one of us is going to have a different way of doing it because Jesus has given each of us different skills. So use those beautiful gifts that God has given you to follow the path of Jesus to take up that cross because there's going to be some hardships. But boy, the prize at the end is so worth it. In fact, we don't have to wait to the end. Jesus gives us gifts all along the way. And one of them is the gift of Eucharist. And another is this gift of reconciliation. That's why I'm sitting by this door here. And some of young people are going to be celebrating their first reconciliation with us here on Thursday night. So whenever we get it wrong, no, Jesus's love is just a step away when we want to do the right thing. And when we get it right, which we will also, it's going to feel so good. I pray you get it right and know God's forgiveness when you don't get it right. God bless you and I look forward to meeting you in person.
Together, let us make our profession of faith. We believe in God, the Father, who made the whole world. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was born in Bethlehem and lived among us, who died on the cross for us and rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who brings life and love to us all. We believe that the church is one family and that one day we will share everlasting life with God in heaven. Amen. We are God's children, and so we come to him with open hearts and persistent prayer to ask for the things we need. For our church, that, that it will always help to lift the burdens from people who suffer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength for all people who want to be followers of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who suffer because of their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve God, that they will do everything that is good and pleasing to our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we end our time together today, we pray to our God. God of compassion, sometimes it is hard to be your followers. Give us and those we pray for the strength to do the right thing always. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. My friends, thank you for spending this time with us today. Have a wonderful week. We will see you again next weekend. Bye.